What's up, guys? This is Carter Thomas with BlueCloudSolutions.com doing another TV show, episode eight, I think we're at. So it's great. We're doing daily updates on what's going on in the app business, giving you guys what the new trends are, what's happening in the news as it relates to the app business, all so that you guys can get better ideas, better execution, better motivation to take your app business to the next level. We tend to talk a lot about trends and bigger things happening, specifically around opportunities. So I tend to think that the the big money and the the big success stories tend to happen when you capitalize on opportunities effectively. So I want to keep throwing these at you guys, and uh, let me know what you think. You know, leave a note in the comments, or you know, subscribe, or leave a like, or or whatever. Just let me know uh, what you think of this. We always start off with the uh, top charts in iOS. I'm using App Annie because it's the most up to date. And I thought I would just, I opened up, uh, you know, I was going to open up a new tra- uh, new channel that category today. And I just figured travel. I'm going to get on a plane in a couple hours here. So I figured, uh, why not do some travel? So when I opened it up, I thought it was really interesting. It's very similar to the finance category. Now, let me, I think I said this last week, but the travel category is notoriously difficult to monetize. I've, uh, it's very hard, especially inside the app. You know, when you get outside the app, and you're doing things like, you know, what, like what uh, Orbitz and Expedia and Google Flights and even what Hotels.com. When you get into that business, you can start to make some money. You just see major volume. So and it's just difficult to compete with them because it's almost like a, an oligarchy in that sense. However, there are some interesting opportunities. Now, without knowing the volume and without knowing the big, uh, you know, the sweeping gross or revenue numbers behind this, there are some things that stick out. Specifically, um, one, there's a lot of corporate apps, right? This is kind of like the finance category in the sense that there's a lot of company businesses. So on the free side, you're probably going to have a hard time breaking into the top, right? It's just these are very, these guys have a lot of money. They have a lot of marketing horsepower, and they have a lot of te- dedicated users. So I would probably st- stay away from the free category. Go over to the paid, however, and you start to see some interesting trends. Now, Camp and RV, if you guys are in the Blue Cloud app formula, you saw that this is one of the apps. It's still at the top of the charts, right? We went through this in depth in that course on how to do that. But what's interesting about this category is I think when people think about the travel category, we think we tend to think about going on vacation or going somewhere fun or new or exciting. You know, traveling is kind of has this... Um, what do you call it? Like po- like fun, kind of playful vibe to it. In reality, a lot of travel is for business. A lot of travel is uh, for the people that are in the business of travel, right? The pilots or the air traffic controllers or, or whatever. <clears throat> and there's a lot of opportunity within that. So you get a, a, a whole uh, cross gamut within the travel category and What you'll notice is that all of these really dial into who the people are first, and then they solve the problem for the people second, right? So live air traffic control, air radio. I don't even know what this is. I'm assuming it's for air traffic controllers, right? So app, but it solves such a perfect problem for such a unique group of people that it can do really well, right? It can get, uh, you know, this is kind of true in things like the drone world, right? Another company that I have. Um, you also notice that there's some interesting, you know, Hawaiian Moji. That's a blue cloud member using the, uh, you know, blue cloud emoji templates. Capitalize on the fun side of travel, right? This is probably more of the traditional travel uh, world. Same with uh, the Road to Hana app, I believe I saw right here, which is a famous uh, road in Maui, Hawaii. So, I think, first of all, you got to think about the people, right? Like what, what subcategory of travelers are you really trying to appeal to? Because it's not all people going to Hawaii or whatever. And once you find those people, how are you solving a very, very unique problem in a very unique way? Um, and similar to what I talked about yesterday, content is really the ultimate way to do that. I think functionality it can be can work, but you, you know, it, it's more of a, development intensive uh, project, if if that's your thing. But I really like, 
you know, it looks like you, the places that have, like if you, if you do want to go after travelers, uh, you know, you find, like, I would just go and like Google, what are the top 10 tourist destinations in the world? And I bet Hawaii's up there. I bet like Disneyland is up there, right? I bet Yellowstone National, maybe not Yellowstone, but like the Grand Canyon is probably up there. Uh, and you can see that the, the ones that are doing really well, if you want to go after that audience, they capitalize on the ones with the highest traffic. So travel is an interesting category. I think, you know, you stay away from the free, go after the paid, you find the exact group of people. You've got a nice little passive income stream going. It could be, it could be really great. And I think you'd have a lot of fun with that marketing too, because, you know, you could put up some pretty sweet pictures and videos and all that. A couple other pieces of news that I wanted to share with you guys. First one, GoPro. I think GoPro is going to go to business or get bought probably in the next 18 months. They're just, a, man, they could have been so great. Uh, but they just, they really blew it on the software side. However, it is interesting to see what they're trying to do, right? So they just released this new thing into their app called Quick Stories, where it, it tries to make the, uh, the time between capturing content, editing content, and publishing content, make, make that as small as possible, right? Like require as few clicks or swipes as possible. Will this work? I doubt it because GoPro users tend to be people that are either filmmaker types who are like going to get really nice shots or they people that shoot a lot of content and just kind of forget that they shot a lot of content and that's the end of that. And there's they don't really have a lot of people in that middle ground. And I don't think that uh, this is really going to do anything, mostly just because GoPro has messed up almost everything else they've done. However, I do think that this is pointing to a bigger trend, which is what Instagram stories, Snapchat, GoPro is obviously starting to do. And I think that what artificial intelligence and to a certain extent augmented reality is pointing to is that there is there is a huge opportunity and a huge market that is just starting to happen where you can not only empower people to be creators, but to turn that creativity into something in a very seamless and almost automated way, right? And that, that, that could be as simple as automatically up like you know posting something for them or it could be having some sort of algorithm that maybe slices every every other every other five seconds it puts it together so it looks like a jump cut i don't know but the the idea of taking content off of someone's device and turning it into a well-produced piece of content that they could publish that's better than all the raw footage that is a big opportunity that is going to be an enormous market so in your apps or if you're a developer that's going to be something that's humongous in the next five years. A couple earnings came out this week that I thought were really interesting. Twitter added zero users last quarter. Previously, they crushed it, right? Because they had the presidential campaign. They had all these new people signing up to follow the president on Twitter and hear what he was had to say. This quarter, Twitter completely bombed. Like terrible stock down 15% today or whatever that may be. What's interesting about this, in my opinion, is well, I, I have this thesis about social networks and how all social networks that win do so by appealing to a certain part of ourselves. I think Twitter is what you're thinking. The people that are attracted to people that are power users tend to be very cerebral types, right? I think that that's what Twitter has become. It's what are you thinking? I think Facebook is what are you feeling, right? That's why the ads continue to crush it. That's why it's becoming more of a sales area because it's an emotional place and emotions are where all the selling happens, right? So Facebook is where you feel. Instagram is who you want to be, right? That's what that platform is. And so that's not going to go away because people will always want to be somebody else. And they'll also want to be get lost, like escape into other people's lives and see how amazing their lives are and feel terrible about themselves. (laughs) That's kind of a dire way to describe it, but it's true. And you can do this for all social networks, right? And you see like when the, the bigger they are, the more they appeal to like more fundamental parts of us. What this says to me is that Facebook is growing, Twitter's stagnating, Instagram is growing. Meaning that Twitter from for people is tending is becoming less 
interesting, right? It's, it's capturing less attention. Now, I don't know what the depth of those users are. Maybe they're becoming better and better users, but they're not attracting new people. They're not getting in new people because the idea of having new thoughts or listening to other people's thoughts or whatever it may be in this format is not that interesting. What this means for you when you're building apps is that you, you want to look at what are you appealing to with your users. Are you appealing to this idea of transformation, right? Like here's where you are before you use this app. Here's where you're going to be after you use this app. Is it going to be you're smarter? Is it going to be you feel better? Is it going to be you laugh? Is it going to be you're entertained? Is it going to be you look better? You're cooler. People are going to like you more. What is that transformation? And when you identify that transformation, that's when you can go and figure out the, uh, the, the places to market it, the places to do your research, right? Because if you're doing all your research on Instagram, for people that are very intellectual, you're wasting your time, right? Like you should be on Twitter or Quora or Reddit or something, right? You should be targeting the people for your app. That's where you do your marketing. That's where you build your audience. I've done this for a couple other companies. I've done this for a bunch of apps. <clears throat> it crushes it. There's a reason why for emoji apps, we only focus on Facebook because emoji is all about emotions. Facebook is where all the emotion is. Instagram to a certain extent, but Facebook really just crushes it. Like they build that thing on emotion. So something to think about, keep that in mind as you see these networks grow, you know, wax and wane. And finally, Facebook, some people thought that they were going to, you know, drop or whatever. <laughs> Obviously Zuckerberg just comes in and just drops the absolute hammer. Uh, no, no surprise here. They're going to crush it. They're going to tighten up um, their expenses, but they're going to invest more. So all that means is it just changes the way the balance sheet looks. It's not a, not a huge deal. Um, video ads were one of the biggest areas of growth, right? So people are spending tons of money on video ads and they're going to invest in creating new and original content, right? They're going to build their own, kind of like what Amazon Prime did. They're going to try to build their own content engine where you can watch TV shows, things like that on Facebook. I actually think that that's not going to do that well. I think most people think it's going to crush it and all that, but Facebook inherently doesn't keep people around. And if you ever, any marketers out there, if you ever load a video to Twitter, or I'm sorry, to YouTube or to Facebook, two completely different experiences for the users, two completely different uh, results from, as a marketer. I think Facebook, unless they can figure out how to push people to a new app like Facebook video or something like that, they're gonna have a hard time uh, making that work. But in the meantime, what this means for you guys, video, video is everything for marketing, for content, for how to build your app, how to, how to appeal to people, what do people want? Everything is going to video, right? If you want some tips, go look at the blog post I did a few weeks ago about three easy tips for Facebook ads or how to get a video going. Video is everything if you are in marketing. I'm telling you, it, it, it destroys everything else you can do, especially when you're trying to market your apps. All right, well, that's today, today's download. Tomorrow I'll be on the East Coast doing another uh, Blue Cloud TV episode, and I will see you guys then. I will talk to you soon. Peace out.